All right, MBA sixth graders. Today we're going to be looking at our mousetrap car project. There's a lot of key elements that are going to go into this mousetrap car project that um, on the surface you may look at this and say, oh, it seems pretty simple. And it really is, but we're going to be taking it to a level that hopefully you'll be incorporating physics, mathematics, and a lot of key things we've been speaking about in tech class into your mousetrap car. So the basis of a mousetrap car is nothing more than taking a mousetrap car, or excuse me, a mousetrap, and affixing it to some sort of vehicle that allows the potential energy that's stored in a mousetrap to go ahead and be transferred to an axle of some sort that will power the mousetrap car down our hallway. All right. Now, there's a lot of elements that are going to come into play when we're looking at how we can go ahead and make this vehicle travel. Looking at our competition for class, our competition for class is going to be a competition where we're looking at who can make their mousetrap car travel the furthest distance down the hallway. We're looking to obtain a minimum of 30 feet. Okay, so 30 feet is going to be your minimum mark that you're shooting for when you're designing this mousetrap car. We'll talk about how you're going to hopefully obtain that 30 feet a little later. With that said, the competition is for distance, not speed. That's a crucial element when we're starting to look at how we're going to get this mousetrap car to be powered, is you have to understand that the difference between distance versus speed. All right, we're aiming for distance which is going to play a huge role. All right, so number one, let's take a look at the rules of the mousetrap car itself. There are no specific parameters on the number of wheels, the number of axles, or anything along those lines, okay? There is a specific parameter in terms of what can be powering the vehicle. You're only allowed to have one mousetrap power this vehicle, okay? No other power may be utilized, stored, or harnessed within this vehicle. So you cannot take a mousetrap as well as a series of rubber bands to wrap around the rear axle to power this vehicle. It can only be the spring that is driven off of our mousetrap. Okay? Now, with that mousetrap, you're probably and most likely going to want to extend the bale. The bale is the typical, the, typically the part on the mouse trap that would go ahead and crush the mouse. All right, we're going to be using that bale and extending that bale via a lever arm. All right, so we'll be taking a lever arm to extend our bale. The lever arm is going to take the potential energy that's stored within our spring and space out the duration in which that potential energy is released. So instead of having an immediate snap like this, we're going to want our potential energy to be expelled slowly over the entire duration of our mousetrap car traveling hopefully this 30 feet. That's the key, all right? So generally speaking, there's a fine line that's going to be uh, found between the length of your bail extension, the length of your lever arm, and how far this mousetrap car is going to travel. Okay. Now the general principle behind how these mousetrap cars work is you would have some sort of string. In this particular case, it's just a fishing line, so it's kind of hard to see. But you'd have some sort of string that is extended off your bail extension and wrapped around a cylindrical axle. Okay. So in this particular case, we have a couple CD wheels. All right and we have wooden dowels as an axle. When we wrap this string around our axle and then release our mousetrap, mouse trap, it causes this axle to spin. The resultant is this wheel spinning pushes the vehicle down the road. Okay. Now there's a couple other terms we need to speak about um, which we'll talk about in a, in a minute here regarding the diameter of this wheel Okay, the thickness of this wheel, the uh, rolling resistance of this wheel, which would be caused in 
friction and other forces, okay? So a lot of words I'm throwing out here. Number one, diameter. All right, the diameter of our wheel or the measurement across the wheel, like so, needs to be evaluated because the diameter of the wheel is also going to come into play in terms of the circumference, okay? The circumference of the wheel is looking at going a full revolution around the wheel, okay? So the diameter, the larger the diameter, let's say we have a wheel that is uh, five inches in diameter, okay, is going to have a longer circumference. The circumference can be looked at as how far this vehicle is going to travel. So if I look at the circumference of my CD wheel here, okay, if I mark my CD with a line like so, and I place that line on the chalkboard, I'm going to mark and line up that line. So I have a line here and a line here that is going to line up exactly. If I look at the circumference, one revolution around, okay, this CD wheel takes this long to make one complete revolution. That is the linear length of my circumference of the wheel. All right. So this is the total length that one revolution of CD wheel that a CD wheel makes. Now let's say you take something much larger, like a record. Record which is much larger. Let's say ten inches in diameter. The 10 inch record, as we roll that across, will take longer in duration to lay out its linear circumference. All right? So, generally speaking, you're going to want to use a larger diameter wheel because you're going to get further distance on one revolution. The whole process of trying to go the furthest distance is trying to get the longest distance out of one revolution of your circumference, which also equates to the diameter. The best way to try this is to mark one of your wheels, like so, place that mark on something, make one complete revolution while rolling, and remark it. You'll end up with different marks like this. Okay, That could be measured to tell you how far your vehicle will travel per how many revolutions it makes. Now the total number of revolutions is going to be depicted by and counted by how long you can extend your lever arm. So the length of your bail extension also comes into play as we wrap it around the axle. Okay. Now be advised that a lot of times people will create uh, lever arms or diameters that are way too large and the result of that is they sit their mousetrap car down and it doesn't actually move. So it's crucial that you have a fine balance between a large enough wheel with a long enough bail extension, but it's not too long in the sense that uh, you place your car down, you want it to start moving, your mousetrap is in the cocked position or brought back, you release it, and it doesn't go anywhere. So it's a fine line between being able to travel at the correct speed, correct distance, but also... Um, you know, not too small that we're going too quick and only traveling a foot or so, okay? Remember our goal is 30 feet. You should be able to take the diameter, if you want to look at the math of this, take the diameter, figure out the circumference by using our friend pi, so I think it's uh, 2 pi r to get the circumference, all right? You could do that mathematical formula and produce the length of one revolution. So if we know that one revolution here is equal to 18 inches with a CD wheel, I should know that if I spin this 50 times, how far I'm going to travel. So I can travel 18 inches times 50 revolutions. That would tell me how many inches I would be traveling. I could then go over and equate that to my distance that I'm aiming for, which is 30 feet, and see if I'm going to be successful or not. All right? If you're not going to be successful, you would have to either change the length of your lever arm to get more rotations, or change the diameter or the circumference of your rear drive wheel. All right? Now, 
Today, what I would like you to start doing after this project has just been introduced, I would like you to start looking at some practical designs for your mousetrap car. All right. Number one, this is the most basic, the most simplest, and probably the most boring mousetrap car that I've seen. All right. This is not by any means supposed to be an exemplar of what you are to be producing. I would recommend trying something a little different than a rectangle with a mousetrap drilled onto the top and a little rear section removed for your axle. There are plenty of different options going after two wheels, three wheels, maybe uh, anything that can incorporate less friction, which is a huge concept when we're looking at how we can go about getting this thing to travel down the road. It's not just about producing different diameter wheels. It's also about producing less friction so that when these wheels spin, there's less rolling resistance and this vehicle can travel further. All right. So today, what I would like you to do is you're going to be planning and starting to think about what your mousetrap car is going to look like. This is going to be done on an individual basis. So there's no need to find a partner. You're simply going to be working by yourself starting to plan, produce sketches, and possibly producing some of these mathematical equations to figure out how you can obtain that 30 feet. 30 feet is our base. If you hit 60 feet, excellent. If you hit 100 feet, awesome. All right, But 30 feet is the minimum distance that we're looking to travel. So you should be traveling at least 30 feet in length. That can all be calculated based on the diameter of the wheel, circumference, and how many revolutions you're going to get out of your lever arm. Okay? Um, sketches should start taking place in form of the top view of the mousetrap car. So possibly if I were drawing the top view of this, I would probably draw something that looked like this. And this would be able to depict and show anyone looking at this what this mousetrap car would look like. I'd have my axle, my CD wheels, Axle, CD wheels, mousetrap, bail extension, all right, and then string drawn back to this. Okay. It's important to start noting the diameter of what these wheels are going to be. So if I'm using a CD, maybe I want to see, say, it's a four-inch diameter CD wheel. All right. Like I said. You're going to want to try different diameters of different objects. Maybe you have an old record at home. Maybe you have some wheels from an old toy truck that you could try. What I will supply to you as a class is I will supply any wood that is required. I will supply the wooden dowels for axles if you decide to use those. I will also supply the mouse traps. Anything above and beyond that which is going to make your car extraordinary and hopefully make it reach this 30 feet or larger is going to be up to you to supply as an individual. So not only are you going to be sketching and looking at this stuff, also start thinking about what you have at home that you can bring in um, that would work for parts for this car. Tonight when you go home, take a look and see what you have kicking around that you could possibly use. Old wheels to a truck, um, bearings from a skateboard that allow this to travel very, very smoothly. All right. There's a whole slew of different options of items and objects that you could bring in that would hopefully work to solve this problem. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to email me, or we can pick up next time we meet in class. All right, good luck, and it's going to be a fun project to start on.